Hi, my name is Gary Bacon, and I'm a UX researcher and designer. And today I want to talk to you about accessibility for tooltips. What is web accessibility? So the definition technically is creating websites, web applications, and interactions that remove barriers so that a person with a disability is afforded an equitable online experience. Their experience is as good as everybody else's, and by covering a lot of those concerns, we end up reaching a wider audience and providing a better user experience. And also, sometimes you'll hear the term 508 compliance. So that is shorthand for a law that the US government has for websites to be safe and accessible. It's a requirement that a lot of government agencies adhere to and government employees whenever making web applications. All right, so what is a tooltip? So uh, Nielsen Norman Group defines it as a tooltip is a brief informative message that appears when a user interacts with an element in a graphical user interface. You may have seen these in some web applications. If you hover over your mouse, it'll give you additional information about an icon. Or in some applications, if you click or tap on that icon, it'll give you additional information. Um, a lot of times, it's just to provide a clear label for what that interaction should be. So let's jump into an example. I came across a web application the other day that had job ID and then it had 232240 with an outline copy icon and it said click to copy. Um, whenever I used a screen reader, um, I did run into some accessibility issues. Uh, what were some of those issues? Well, the first thing is you'll notice it fails a contrast test. The outline there and the copy icon, uh, that's in a light gray. And if you use a contrast application like the one I used here called Contrast for Mac, uh, it fails. And that's bad for people with visual impairments or in having difficulty seeing. Um, and, you know, another issue with this is it was a button. Um, kind of looks like an input element. Wasn't really sure when looking at that for the first time. And the tooltip also had a hover functionality. For people with uh, motor disabilities, sometimes that's a little difficult to activate or trigger. Um, so the only function of this button is to copy the number. However, um, job ID technically is the label. So job ID is describing 232240. Um, looks like a text input. And semantically, that's incorrect for it being a button too. So the first solution is no tooltip. Um, if content can fit outside of a tooltip, then really don't use a tooltip. As a last result, resort, then tooltips are okay um, when space is a premium. So for instance, in a uh, you know very small application or very small space uh, where it's limited, maybe tooltips are a good idea. Um, so for instance, in this example, job ID clearly labeled um, that information, and then the function is just to copy that. Um, and then if a screen reader were to read this, we could use ARIA labels to say copy 232240 to be a little bit more specific. So another example is to use a tooltip, um, especially if space is limited. If there's a lot of data in this web application, or maybe it's a larger table with a lot of information, um, you can use an icon here without a label. Make sure to use a title attribute and an alt attribute on that image uh, that says something like click to copy or uh, copy job ID. Um, that's basically progressive enhancement so that if, you know, the for some reason JavaScript is turned off or they can't hover to see click to copy, then they'll at least know the intent and the function for this. Um, you can use ARIA labels for this as well, or maybe ARIA labeled by. Um, so overall, things to keep in mind, uh, the design guidance here is that the information should be helpful. It should kind of indicate what they do. It should enhance confidence, meaning if it is a copy icon and maybe that's clearly understood or a print icon, um, then it should just be a little bit more descriptive to describe maybe what you're printing or what you're copying. Um, that would go back to helpful information too. And due to the nature of, you know, how small it is near an icon, you want to be brief. Um, don't want to have a long sentence or something that's hard to read. Always remember to use tooltips as a last resort when space is a premium. Now for front-end development, 
and this could be its own video, um, just remember to use the proper ARIA label. Um, maybe ARIA labeled by, which would take precedence over like a button label, depending on the semantics of the um, the uh, the elements. And then be sure to use role equals tooltip on the tooltip itself, just so the screen reader knows how to handle that. Other thing to remember is to use a screen reader when testing. Something like VoiceOver on Mac, or better yet, on a PC, JAWS. But the best option is using what those with a disability might use, which would be a screen reader in this case. I like to keep these short, so thanks for joining me for Accessibility for Tooltips. Be sure to hit like and subscribe for more.